Major support for Out to Lunch is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker, established in 1937 with over 375 attorneys in offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of services to a local, national, and international client base. JonesWalker.com. And by Shorten Associates, legal recruiters in Louisiana and Texas. And Orange Theory Fitness, delivering fitness results for a healthier world. From Mansers on the Boulevard in Baton Rouge, we're out to lunch with editor of the Baton Rouge Business Report, Stephanie Regal. It's business Baton Rouge style. Hi, I'm Stephanie Regal. Welcome to Out to Lunch. In 2018, the U.S. wedding industry was worth an estimated $75 billion, and the average wedding set the happy couple or their parents back by a whopping $44,000, nearly double the average cost of just a year or two earlier. Yes, weddings are big business today, and that has created all sorts of opportunities for creative entrepreneurs who have figured out how to offer goods and services to satisfy the fancy and the budget of every bride. Yes, we are talking weddings today on Out to Lunch, and with me today to discuss this is Lauren Bercier, founder and CEO of Something Borrowed Blooms, a startup that offers rent and return flowers for your special day. The company uses high-quality silk flowers and then does the arrangements themselves, being mindful of the latest trends and fashions in floral arrangements. Lauren co-founded the company in 2015 with her cousin, basing it on their experiences as brides. And after a couple of years of slow growth, company revenues shot up 400% in 2018. Lauren says today's millennial brides want picture-perfect weddings but don't necessarily want to spend money on pricey fresh flowers. And with something borrowed blooms, they don't have to. Lauren, you are like revolutionizing the wedding industry. It's such a great idea, and we are so excited to have you here with us today. Thank you. Yeah, we're excited being to here. be here as well. Yeah, we like to say that we're modernizing the wedding flower industry. There you go. Yep. Mm-hmm. Joining me and Lauren is Felix Sherman Jr., co-owner of one of Baton Rouge's most beloved bakeries, Ambrosia, which is particularly well known for its beautiful wedding cakes and, of course, a whole bunch of other sinfully delicious confections. Ambrosia was founded in 1991 by Felix's parents, Felix and Cheryl Sherman. Cheryl had been decorating cakes in the 1980s and had spent some time working in other bakeries and gift shops. She's very artistic and creative. And after losing his job due to a company merger in 1991, Felix decided it was time to try something new. So they opened a bakery together and Ambrosia was born. In the years since, it has grown tremendously and expanded three times in 2008 to its present location on Segan Lane, where it also has a deli that serves breakfast and lunch. It has been recognized not only locally, but nationally, picking up, among others, an award for being one of the top 50 wedding cake bakeries in America. Felix, it's a great story, and everybody loves Ambrosia, so thanks for being here today on Out to Lunch. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Well, Laura, I'm going to come back to you first. Um, Something Borrowed Blooms, the right concept at the right time, such a great idea. Thank you. So you and your cousin started this. Were you brainstorming ideas because you wanted to come up with a way to help people save money on weddings or was it a floral idea you or you just wanted to come up with a cool entrepreneurial idea that's the the last is the right ticket here so we really wanted to start a business um at that time i had stopped working i had had you know had babies at home and um i was um just a stay-at-home mom. Okay. My cousin on the flip side was working in the corporate world, also starting her family. And um, we both just had this entrepreneurial itch that we knew we really wanted to get into. Um, my background was in public relations. Her background is in marketing. So we had the right skill sets and we, we considered you know, the right um, resources to, to look into something. And what initially got us excited was Rent the Runway. That concept we thought was so interesting how you could rent a really high priced ticket item Um, use it for a weekend and pay a fraction of the cost of that item. So we were looking at ways to apply that same concept, but to a different market. And so flowers. Mm -hmm. And and how did you come up with the idea of flowers? How how do you even know what to do with flowers? (laughs) Yeah, okay. So flowers started, we, we started looking at weddings specifically because they can be so expensive. We had both gotten married recently. When I started thinking about it more, my fl- wedding flower experience was less than what I had hoped for. Mm-hmm. Met with the florist, told her, well, told her what I liked, showed her some pictures, thought we were on the same page. And the day of the wedding, you know, she shows up with this box of flowers and it was just less than yeah. I had hoped for. So I was disappointed, but by that point I had spent the thousands of dollars on flowers and by that point it was kind of too late. 
And um, so we kind of took that thought. Lakin originally had the idea of using silk flowers. My initial reaction was like, there is Ew. no way. <laughs> like, no, that's not going to work. Um, we, I had, you know, craft store flowers in mind when we first Correct. started talking about it. But once we looked into it more and realized that there were some really premium, high-end, beautiful silk flowers that when designed the perfect way, they can create such beautiful options. Excellent. Okay, well, I want to hear more about that. But speaking of premium, high-end, beautiful, Felix, that's what Ambrosia's cakes are really known for. They're just like little works of art. And Ambrosia really started because of your mother's expertise in cakes? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> back when we, uh, when I was in high school, she uh, was taking cake decorating lessons with a good friend of mine. And, uh, of course, she took it to the next level and is decorating everybody's cakes at home and so forth. And Dad got transferred over to uh, Homa, Louisiana, and uh, she started making uh, wedding cakes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, she was actually... Uh, had somebody knock on the door and said, uh, you can't do this out of your home. You don't have a triple sink. You're not sanitary, blah, blah, blah. Which, of course, now they can because right. of the cottage law. Uh, however, but uh, so she said, well, if I can't join them, I, I can't do this. I may as well go ahead and join them. And so she actually started working at a bakery in Homa. Fantastic. And so, from there, like I said, it evolved. Yes. How, how much of a part of y'all's business are cakes and specifically wedding cakes? If you were breaking down the, the Probably about 25%. So, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a good amount. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of cakes. You know, there'll be any specific weekend I could be delivering, you know, eight to ten wedding cakes just here in the local area. In, in a weekend? In a weekend. In a day. Wow. And, and weddings <laughs> have really, yeah. like I said in the introduction, weddings have gotten to be big business. Right. And, yeah. and every, it just seems like they're more and more over the top. Mm -hmm. I guess we live in an Insta world, right? And everybody wants the Insta perfect wedding. It's yeah. Pinterest. Yeah. Pinterest wedding. I'd agree with that. But I'd also say that, you know, our business specifically, we really look at millennial trends and we're noticing that millennials who are getting married a little bit later mm -hmm. and sometimes are, you know, paying for their weddings rather than parents paying for everything. They are a little more conscious of their budget and how they're spending that money. So they're looking for ways to allocate their budget differently. Um, so that's something that we've noticed and that was a huge, another big reason why we kind of, uh, you know, designed our business the way that we did so that we give them an opportunity to save in, a, in an area that they think isn't as meaningful, but they can, you know, stretch that budget in areas that might be more exciting to them, like the honeymoon or, you know, sure. or the cake, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it may be that is more important to them. To and, them. and how much do you save, for instance, using you know, a, a silk floral arrangement. Than so we're floor. typically 70% less expensive 70. than a traditional That's florist. Huge. So bride, That's couples huge. are saving thousands of dollars by renting their flowers. We get feedback all the time from couples all over the country um, saying that, you know, the, the couple was able to take the honeymoon of their dreams because of the money that they save by renting their wedding flowers. And where do you get these beautiful silk flowers? So we, we select them, we source them from wholesalers throughout the U.S. Um, we, we buy from all the largest um, silk flower wholesalers that and we go and we hand select every single stem so that the quality and designs are exactly what we're, you know, wanting to mm -hmm. put out there. So. Okay. And then when you get them, then do you all make yes. prototype arrangements? So we have or? a production team now that um, produces all of the floral arrangements that we provide. Um, so we have a staff of about, you know, six or seven on the production team who builds out all of our, all of our products. But how how big is this is this business? I mean, um, right now we've grown pretty, like you said, significantly over the last year. So we're now a staff of sixteen. Um, we're currently servicing over four hundred weddings per month. Four hundred a month. Yeah. Which is exciting. When we started, the goal was to do 12 weddings a month. <laughs> I was like, if we can do 12 weddings, this would be awesome. Uh, and now we're, you know, we're, like, we're currently doing 400. Uh, by the end of 2020, we're on track to be a, at about 2,000 weddings per month. So the, the goal at that point is to capture 1% of the wedding market, which we really think we can do. And In the whole United States? Yeah. And we, but we are also serving Canada as well. Mm. So we're serving Canada and looking at ways to expand to the Caribbean and some other destination areas. Can, can you stay in Louisiana? I mean, and do it from here? As of right now, we're growing in Louisiana. We've been able to find outside investors, outside capital. Like we've been able to really grow this national business right here in Louisiana, which is really exciting. That is, and, and have you got national publicity and recognition? Yeah, we've actually been on Good Morning America. We've um, been featured in Martha Stewart Weddings, on The Knot. Um, lots of big wedding publications. Uh, we're showing up New York Bridal Fashion Week this year. Um, we have some some major, you know, 
things in the works that are really exciting. So the, the goal really is to be a national, um, nationally recognized brand. Fantastic. Yeah. You mentioned that, that people can save money on the flowers and spend it, for instance, on the cakes exactly. or something like that. <laughs> I mean, Felix, are, are wedding cakes that that expensive? And Well, <clears throat> what we've seen lately is the, the budget has kind of been reduced, mm -hmm. you know, with the amount of money that people are spending, mm -hmm. like you're saying, totally tremendously. However, um, I'm a father of two young ladies that have already been married. <laughs> really? So been there, have done that, <laughs> you know, have paid the high price mm -hmm. for everything. Um, so, um, but the cakes have gotten a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. you know, occasionally we'll get some large cakes, you know, and so um, just not exactly where we were in the past as far as the design, mm -hmm. you know. Not as many fondant cakes as what we used to do. Okay. Um, because I used to do them all. Okay? Really? So um, we're not actually designing those as many now. Uh, so, uh, but more of a buttercream. And then a lot of people are just amazed at our buttercream on how smooth it is because they think it's fondant, oh. but it's not, you know, so. Buttercream's always the so artistry. much better. Yeah. There's a buttercream yeah. cake, I'm excited. Yeah, <laughs> right. for sure. I, I know that um, the artistry behind these is, is so, I mean, is it very difficult to, do you have to just have a steady hand? Do you follow a sort of a, a prototype or well, steps the, to take? Because it's really... The, the ones that do decorate, of course, my mom was the artist that got everybody started. She's the one that trains people, make sure that it's all done precisely the way it needs to be done. The girls pick up on it really fast. You know, there's nothing that we see uh, on Pinterest, online, that we can't possibly recreate in hmm. some sort of fashion, you know. But the brides are, you know, the one thing that's unique about what we do is is that the brides are very specific on their creations. You know, they want it to look like the back of their dress. They want the lace of their dress on the cake. Really? You know, so um, it makes it really unique for everybody, you know, so. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Lauren, I'm, I'm fascinated by this concept. And, and how do you, for instance, keep silk flowers looking fresh? How do you get somebody's flowers back that have been used and spruce them up to send out to the next person? Yep, so we created a custom insert that we use for shipping, so it keeps the flowers um, in, in the box, upright, nice and neatly during transit, so things usually, you know, are able to go there and come back without too much, you know, shuffle through mm -hmm. the uh, transit process. Um, so the brides receive a return label when they receive their package. So everything's really nice and you know organized and neatly set up for them to return very simply. When we do re uh, receive flowers back, our, our packing team kind of goes through a quality control process. So they'll unpack everything, and if there's anything that needs to be refreshed, it goes to the, ref the revamp area where our, our production team will change out a stem if needed, or you know rearrange a, a, an arrangement if it needs if it's kind of out of place. But typically, um, everything's able to be reused over and over again, and right. we'll just replace you know, single stems as needed. And do you have like any florists on staff to we help do. you with this? Mm -hmm. or, okay. Yeah, so our lead designer now is a florist. When we first started, it was just Lakin and myself and I am not the crafty one. So Lakin <laughs> was the one who was designing everything. Um, but um, yeah, we do have a florist on staff who's our lead designer. And then we also, like our, pro our production team has um, three uh, designers who have floral experience and then three assistants so and i don't know do floors need to be licensed in louisiana they do they, that's what i thought fresh flowers but, but not, not with silk flowers you're listening to out to lunch i'm stephanie regal i'm talking with lauren bercier of something borrowed blooms and felix sherman jr of ambrosia bakery we'll be right back after this very short break You're listening to Out to Lunch. I'm Stephanie Regal. I'm talking to Lauren Bercier of Something Borrowed Blooms and Felix Sherman Jr. of Ambrosia Bakery. Felix, how do you all market at your respective businesses and advertise? I'm sure social media is huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we do a lot on social media. You know, I handle all that as well. You know, um, we haven't, I hate to say this, but we don't do that much advertising in the wedding department because the phone just never stops. You know, I mean, so you don't just, need to, in other words. Correct. You know, a small percentage of it is used towards that because we're so limited on how many we can do in a given weekend. Right. Uh, you know, as far as deliveries and setups and so forth. You know, so we try to stay within the local, you know, Baton Rouge area. You know, because if somebody decides, you know, hey, I want a cake in New Orleans. You know, that's a two hour transportation there and back, you know, let alone the setup for it as well. So it kind of cuts away from doing more here locally. Right. You know, so 
Um, so we try to stay, you know, within our realm, you know, about 90 miles mm -hmm. thereabouts. Yeah, mm -hmm. which makes total sense for your business. And then for us, we're like completely opposite. So I think, you know, local advertisers get frustrated with us sometimes when we don't bite on like the advertising opportunities they provide for us. We try to explain that, yes, we are local and we're based here in Lafayette and we serve Lafayette and Baton Rouge and all the communities in Louisiana, but our, our reach is truly national. So all of our advertising dollars are, are mostly spent on social media, Google ads, um, you know, those things that we can really cast a wide net. Um, it, it, it's more economic for us, you know, the amount of money we can spend on Facebook and the amount of people we can reach is so sure. much broader than if we bought an ad in a local magazine that's a little bit harder to justify. Of course. Um, so we definitely do all of our advertising, social, um, social media, and then we try to look for opportunities with other wedding related blogs like outlets on Instagram. We'll get Instagram influencers reach out to us or we'll reach out to them where they'll like highlight our product on their Instagram feed so that our brides can kind of see real people, you know, using mm -hmm. our products. Um, so that's another thing that we do. What percentage of the business is national at this point versus local? 20% um, uh, or less, I'd say, is Louisiana weddings. So, so you're doing majority. all of this virtually mm -hmm. out of state. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, huh? yeah, it is. It's been so. Really who crazy. is who's the competition out there? And I mean, I know who your competition is, but um, Felix. But maybe you can tell me who you know who really Ambrosia's up in. And what about other companies copying this idea, Lauren, and yeah, coming after y'all? That actually did happen. Um, about a year and a half after we started, we noticed there was a company who literally copied and pasted our entire website. <laughs> like it really? was like word for word, like my words were just like wow. on their website, which was wow. super infuriating. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, kind of fast follower, um, but they, you know, they're still around, but we've had to get legal action to get them to kind of, you know, do your own thing. Um, but besides that, um, our, our biggest competition would be other national floral companies, but that have a different model. So there's, um, I see. there's companies that will send you fresh flowers with instructions on how to put your own bouquets together, like geared toward the DIY bride, who isn't necessarily our customer, but, you know, might be someone who would be looking at both options. Um, there's, you know, silk floral, um, people on Etsy that provide like silk flower arrangements on Etsy. So there's, there's some competition, um, but really we're the only company doing uh, silk wedding flowers for rent at this level. And, and can you copyright that idea or trademark it? Or? It's really hard to trademark it because it's not anything that's patentable. Um, but we, we were kind of in the process of copywriting our, you know, our names, our logos, all of our our, um, our concept. yeah, it, the content of the website, those types of things, and even little things like our packaging, things that would make it more difficult for someone to try to enter their market and copy us directly. Um, so we're doing things like that to protect mm -hmm. ourselves. And, and Felix, what about what about Ambrosia? And, and particularly when I think about the grocery stores that are all now getting into not so much the wedding cake business, but the cake business for sure. Well, um, I've had to get quite a few trademarks. Really? You know, because uh, some of our cakes were just appearing on their shelves, mm -hmm. you know, and have to get in touch with the owners and call for a cease and assist, no you know, because they'll, they've taken all your business, you know, I mean, it's something that, you like, know, like, like for example, the cake we were talking about earlier belongs to Whole Foods, you know, so we never would make something that belongs to them because we know who owns it, Sure. you know, we don't sure. own it, they do. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would never infringe upon that. But there's been some other local uh, right, uh, uh, supermarkets that have infringed. And they tried to steal your And my cake. kids would send me pictures saying, hey, Dad, look what's here at the shop, you know. And I'm like, wow. OMG, I'm going to have to get on top of this, <laughs> yeah. you know, because you get very infuriated, you yeah. know, when somebody steals your idea and your concept. And so uh, what made it even more difficult, which we were fighting for a long time, was the cottage law you know, which was allowing anybody in their home to make cakes, you know, and what makes it really difficult is, is that I have to go through all the regulations, everything that you can think of that needs to be correct and on mark, you know, mm. but then anybody can make one right out of their home and they don't have to do anything. And they don't have to follow the, the food nope. laws like, nope. like other, nope. like other food vendors would. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Hmm. Which makes it very challenging, you know, for us. You sure. Know? So you got... You know, like, for example, you know, my mom was making it back in the day when she mm -hmm. was told that she couldn't do that out of house. So what did she do? She Open listened to the bakery, them. right? She listened <laughs> to them and said, well, if I can't do it, I might as well go join them. And she got a job, you know. Um, so um, when did the, um, the cottage law go into effect? 
Oh, uh, it's been about, I'm just guessing, about three or four years okay. now. Okay, not know. familiar with that one. Yeah. That so fascinating. Uh, hmm. Which, you know, was a hard hit for us. You know, us and other bakers were there trying to stop it, you know, but they well, didn't let us. Can you copyright a cake? Can you copyright you can, your strawberry cake, for instance? Well, like, you can. You can't patent it because then everybody knows what's in it. Because yeah. <laughs> then you have to release all the ingredients, you know. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, you know, I'd rather give my left arm than give away the ingredients because that's our staple. You sure, know? that's what people come to us. Sure, you know. That's so interesting. <laughs> Are there secret ingredients in cakes? In that particular cake, there is. Okay, <laughs> it's such a good cake, Lauren. Um, I, I, you mentioned we were talking about the competition. Is, is Amazon or, or Google doing something similar to what you are? No, I mean, not with the rental model. Um, there are pre-made silk bouquets you can find on Amazon. Mm -hmm. The quality is much less than what we offer. I think one of the special qualities about um, Something for Our Blooms is that we do have florists on staff who are designing, that we are actually you know, real people with certain tastes that we create collections that we think brides would really gravitate towards. Right. So I think that's what really also sets us apart. In, that, it, I'm sorry. Can yeah, this is not just like, a, you know, it's a pre-made bouquet you can find at like Hobby Lobby. Sure. You know, it's not the same thing. Sure. And you, and you have a wide spectrum of price ranges. I mean, you can do a big extravagant over-the-top wedding. Yeah, and everything is a la carte. So you can, I mean, if you wanted to order three boutonnieres and that's all you needed, that's fine. We'll send you three boutonnieres. And then we also have, you know, we have everything from obviously the bouquets, the, all, your, you know, all your needs for your wedding party, but also centerpieces and garland and lanterns. And now we've even expanded our decor items to include brass candlesticks and LED powered candles. And so we really have a, you know, full ride, wide variety of, of um, product offerings this is that going the brides big. can This uh, is going public. From. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. This is incredible. So, I mean, how, how do you manage all the inventory and know how much to keep? I mean, it seems yeah, like- it's, it's a lot. Gonna, um, it's it's just so, you know, it's funny to think back because if just a few years ago we were doing this outside of my house, in, in my house, you know. Literally. Um, so we had this extra room upstairs that was supposed to be the, the man cave, which quickly became <laughs> overtaken with flowers. The wedding cave. Yeah. <laughs> um, since then, like I said, we're in our warehouse now. So we have, I mean, we have ladders that go up like 20 feet of all of our shelving with all yeah. the products. So, yeah, it's and a it, lot. And it's good. Do you think you'll be able to do it all from one location or as it grows nationally, would it make sense to have a couple of distribution or operations that centers to cut down on sh what I would imagine are shipping costs? Yeah, that, that could be a, that could be um, a potential, you know, something to consider in the future. Right now, we're able to operate out of our warehouse here in Louisiana without any problems. Um, we've been working with FedEx exclusively and they've been really wonderful. We actually won. Uh, third place for their FedEx small business grant recently, a national competition. I think it was like 18,000 applicants. Um, and so since then, they've really helped, you know, us grow our business. We're going to a conference at their at their main hub in, in Memphis in a few weeks um, where they're going to help us like even, you know, think more globally. Like, how can we do this even on a, an even larger scale and how can they help us grow with logistics? So mm -hmm. that's really exciting. And um, they've already gotten us in touch with um, the, the the government portion of um, exporting our products um, beyond just Canada. So like I mentioned earlier to like more Caribbean type areas for destination weddings. So that's something and that's else a that's big thing. Mm -hmm. That's a big, big thing. Mm -hmm. I know we're talking a lot about Very weddings, nice. but Ambrosia does a lot more than just wedding cakes. You said that's about 25% of your business. Correct. I would Correct. imagine the other cakes and, and Beautiful Thank pedophores you. and sweets and cookies yeah. like the some you brought for us to sample. Yes. <laughs> it makes up a, an, another half of it. Oh, or? yeah. Oh, yeah. A large percentage because, uh, you know, people come to us, you know, wanting birthday cakes, anniversary cakes, you know, mm -hmm. all the above, any type of event that you have, you know. And then, you know, we have our deli as well where we make, you know, all different types of sandwich trays and breakfast trays and so forth. That works too. So that helps diversify. Correct. Correct. Have, have all of the TV baking shows affected your business we, or do we people get calls <laughs> every day? You know, in fact, I have somebody that just emailed me last week about going on to a network show. And, no kidding. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, we, we get them a lot. We, we tend to turn them down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just there's so much involved in doing that, you know, uh, that we had uh, just decided that we weren't interested. But we have a lot of fun with it. You know, a lot of big tailgates come up and. Uh, one guy actually uh, last year had contacted us um, from Europe and was doing a huge tailgate at one of the uh, events at LSU. 
and uh, incorporated us into it, you know, and created an, an awesome video, which came out really nice, you know, which was a lot of fun. You That's know, great. A lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You all never wanted to get too big beyond Baton Rouge. Are the plans looking forward over the next three to five years to stay Baton Rouge Capital Region uh, or to expand beyond that? Well, for right now, because, uh, you know, my, mom and dad actually started this up and uh, it's actually bigger than what they ever expected. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the way it is for yeah. now. Uh, my brother and I have other plans, you okay. know, so but we'll take care of those when we get to that. One step Are at your a parents time. still involved in your business? Oh, yeah. 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 They love coming every day. Oh, wow. They like leaving early now, too. <laughs> so, that makes it perfect, uh, whenever, perfect, right? Oh, yeah. They can come and go whenever they want. Sometimes it's time for them just to go on vacation and go <laughs> yeah. find something to do, you know. Uh, but uh, they're special, you know, and we love having them there for sure. <laughs> That's great. And Lauren, you said your plans, you hope to be doing 2,000 weddings a month by 2020. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, uh, exit strategy, are you looking for the big buyout or? Um, um, Shark Tank. I think, right? <laughs> yeah, Shark Tank, maybe. Um, honestly, I think that the company has so much potential that we're just so excited about seeing how much we can grow the business. Um, I have we, we haven't really thought farther than us being in control. Um, we did bring on some uh, some private equity this past year mm -hmm. um, to kind of kickstart more growth. growth. Um, but because we saw so much growth over over last year, we knew that there was some serious potential. And so we knew that an excess, you know, um, cash would help us really reach those goals. So that's been really exciting, which is really, it was a lot like Shark Tank, but just like local, you know, meeting right, with local right. uh, business investors. Right. Um, so that was really exciting. We created a pitch deck, you know, to show them the business and kind of, you know, get their feedback. And it was really, really something to raise money from, you know, other local experienced business owners in the area. So, and actually, uh, we do have a business. Um, one of our investors is based in, in Baton Rouge. Well, very mm -hmm. good. Well, Lauren Bercier and Felix Sherman, this has been such a fascinating conversation, such a fun subject. And it's also interesting to see so much innovation and artistry coming out of our area here in South Louisiana. So keep up the good work and good luck with your continued success. Thank you. Thank you. We look forward to following your progress. Thanks for being here on Out to Lunch. My guests today on Out to Lunch have been Lauren Bercier of Something Borrowed Blooms and Felix Sherman Jr. of Ambrosia Bakery. You can find out more about Something Borrowed Blooms and Ambrosia by going to the links on our website. It's batonrouge.la. The producer of our show is Grant Morris. Our technical producer is Eric Merle. Our associate producer is Peter Raschuti. And our Baton Rouge business consultants are Charlie D'Agostino, Dave Winwood, and Ann Edelman. If you want to know what we all look like, you can find photos from this show on our website, it's batonrouge.la, and on our It's Baton Rouge Facebook page. These photos were taken by Carrie Hosford, and you can find more of Carrie's photos at carriehosford.com. You can hear this show and past episodes of Out to Lunch wherever you get podcasts and at itsbatonrouge.la. Out to Lunch is a production of INO Broadcasting for itsbatonrouge.la and WRKF 89.3 FM. I'm Stephanie Regal. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to meeting you again next week around the table here at Mansur's for more business Baton Rouge style on Out to Lunch. Out to Lunch Baton Rouge is recorded live over lunch at Mansur's on the Boulevard in Baton Rouge. Mansur's is open for lunch daily, 11 to 2, for dinner nightly, and for brunch on Saturdays and Sundays. Mitchell Foreman wrote and performs all the music on Out to Lunch. You can hear Mitchell's music anywhere great jazz is sold or streamed and at MitchellForeman.com. Major support for Out to Lunch is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker, established in 1937 with over 375 attorneys in offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of services to a local, national, and international client base. JonesWalker.com. And by Shorten Associates, legal recruiters in Louisiana and Texas. And Orange Theory Fitness, delivering fitness results for a healthier world. 